Welcome to the Bad Guy Show. That's the new name. It's not the National Football Show. It's now officially Big Sills, the Philly Bad Guy. How are you doing, man? Absolutely awesome. I can't tell you what a great mood I'm in. I can't tell you how relevant the National Football Show and Jacob Sports is today more so than any other day. I would like to send a shout out to the the National Enquirer slash Philadelphia Enquirer for just promoting Big Sills, Jacob Sports, and the National Football Show. Thank you, God. I can't thank you enough. Thank you for the free publicity. Hold on. Let me take that merit badge and put it right here. Boom. How you doing? Holy cow. Wow. And you know what? Because of you guys. People don't come after you when you're doing things wrong or you're bad. They come after you when you're doing things right. That's all of you. Guys are fantastic. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough again. I mean that, man. You have so many other options that you can get to go to. And you guys make this show run, man. Thank the Philly fans, Sills, because Philly fans, you won't have a show. 215. And the folks in Florida. Absolutely. We get it. There's no question about it. No question. By the way, speaking of Florida, my friends in Sarasota and Tampa, I-4 corridor, even folks down South Florida, hey, listen, take cover, man. This I, I posted on my Twitter page what storm surge looks like. Like nine feet of storm surge, you can't survive them. And they're expecting in some places to be as much as 15 feet. You're not surviving that. You have to get out of those low grain areas. Okay? Some of our biggest audience comes from Florida. Well, that's my adopted state, is the state of Florida. I mean, my greatest successes, both in sports and really in broadcasting, all started in the state of Florida. I owe that state everything. My identity, in many ways, is from that state of Florida. So it means a lot to us. And with Hurricane Milton barreling down, there's tornadoes from what I'm hearing from my friends that are sprouting up all over Pasco County and Hillsborough and Hernando County. Down in Sarasota County, too. Down in Bradenton. Down in the Naples area. Hey, guys, do me a favor, please. I'm serious. This one looks like it's going to be like an Andrew-type hit to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the peninsula. So make sure you guys end up taking cover. And I hope many of you got out because they're running out of gas and they're running out of food. And you may be running out of time because this one looks like it's going to be serious here. I've been through many hurricanes. I've played in a situation where Hurricane Hugo, back in the 80s, we flew over one, went in and played Boston College, flew out, flew back over Hurricane Hugo, went back, and it had already hit South Florida. We were in Hurricane Charlie and all those hurricanes back in the early 2000s that were like three in a row. So, I mean, I've been through a ton of hurricanes. And, um, yeah, so just make sure these things aren't anything to uh, mess around with, especially when you're getting above Cat 3 and you're starting to see 4 and 5 here a little bit. So this stuff here is going to be a little bit. um, Thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate it. Shows you Jonathan there is in Central Florida right now, probably around um, Lakeland and places like that. Um, Yeah, man, uh, probably the safest place to be is probably – in the uh, middle part of the state right now. So got to tell you, man, your, your pilot must have been a Florida state alumni sales. Hey, hey, Eduardo, of course they were. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Got to start the program out. Of course, with one of our legendary dicks. Dick Train, welcome to the Dan Cilio and Xander Live Show. They copy everything else others say. Johnny Mac as well. Respected unlike them. Look look at this guy. 
Yeah, I've been doing this shit for 30 fucking eight years. You think I take what other people say and give a fuck what they say? I get banned and barred from places because of my own thoughts, dick bag. Okay? Are you fucking crazy? I could give a shit what people say. This guy thinks I fucking take what people... Most of the people that talk don't know what they're talking about. You know what, Dick? Hey, you know what you could always count on this fucking guy here? He'll be here for four hours telling you this every day, 365 days of the year. Good old media, Dick, probably hiding behind the scenes on his knees in his mom's basement with a, with a bank in his mouth. How you doing? Hey, man, let's get into the sports world here. By the way, please hit the like button. We appreciate all of you on coming aboard here, including Dickhead, Dick Train. Thank you, Dickhead. Yeah, you've now graduated from Dick Train to Dickhead. How you doing? Look at that. See this guy right here? This guy's got his cannoli in his hand because you know why? I recognized him. Congratulations, Dickhead. You, 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 you did it. You win. Now you can go in a corner and be one of the great masturbators. How you doing? All right. Crazy cool. Divisional round. Help me out here. Is the Philly season over? Help me out. What a disaster that would be if the Mets. Hey, by the way, I got to tell. Some of my favorite things in the world are watching Met fans melt down, Jet fans melt down, and Padre fans melt down. I'm starting to get that way a little bit with Eagle fans because you guys melt down pretty good too. You got to admit it. Okay? You got to admit it. You melt down pretty good too. But, uh, you know, I mean, you see the Mets, though, have no success. The Jets have none either. You do. Okay? But I enjoy watching the Mets and the Jets. I, I enjoy the meltdown. I, en I enjoy it. So hook me up here. Okay? Hook me up here a little bit. Is the season over? Nobody melts down like us. Uh, you can't give that honor to any fan base. That's what Sandra says. Nobody melts down like the Eagle fan base. Holy shit, man. I'll tell you what. Yeah, it's pretty true. When the Eagles lose, it's like a tidal wave. When they win, it's like a victory parade. And there's nothing in the middle. It's not a half-assed get-together if you win. It's either a victory parade or it is a tsunami. <laughs> okay? I mean, run! I mean, you got to run for it, man, when the Eagles lose. Okay? You got to run for it. Sills, have you looked at our schedule? Sean, what's the point? What's the point of looking at your schedule? You're not that good where you're going to blow teams out. Are you under some impression you're going to blow teams out? You're not that good. Like I said yesterday, I don't think there's any teams in the NFL that are that good that are just going to blow teams out. I don't, I don't really think there's anybody. Okay? Honest God. I, I, right? I don't care. I mean, you don't have a schedule where you're going to sit here and go, well, we're going to blow everyone out. That's not going to happen. By the way, if the Phillies do lose, that's a colossal disaster. Especially losing to the Mets. Okay? Especially losing to the Mets. Hey, Sills, we up to Cat 4 on Hurricane Howie? You tell me here in a couple seconds here. We'll see if we up the, the category for her, Hurricane Howie here in a second. Browns and Eagles on Sunday. By the way, this just in. 
Cooper DeGene is going to start in the slot over Avante Maddox. I'll tell you what, they're making some moves in this uh, bye week. They cut loose to Devin White. And now they got Cooper DeGene starting in the slot versus the Browns this weekend. Good move? Yeah, he could be any worse. Avante Maddox has been terrible. You know who's next? Sidney Brown is going to get up to speed, and Gardner Johnson is going to be fired. Gardner Johnson is next on this list to be replaced. He's next. You, you can bet any dime you had. He is completely next. Is um is Gardner Johnson. He's next. I heard something pretty interesting today. By the way, let me get the um the list here. Here we go. What's that Elliot Spitzer Shore Parks guy, that that mouthpiece for the Eagle guy? He posted a pretty good list here. I saw Xander repost it as well. Guys, do me a favor. Please hit the like list here. I, I heard Xander and John McMullen on Birds 365. Make sure you check out that fabulous show. Xander said something interesting. And by the way, here's the topic, the first one. Oh! Mark Holmes and Philly 500 at 430. Okay? Mark Farzetta at 330. Xander, we're going to put him in the 5 o'clock hour at the top. He's got to do some work, so we're going to move him up in the rotation a little bit. That'll be at 5 o'clock. Xander and John said something, and it was really Xander that kind of put it out there. And then Xander, I got to teach him a little bit more on this. Follow through on the topic, because you had a good one going, Xander. Xander, you had a good topic going. So... Here's my initial topic, the exposing of Howie Roseman continues in 2024 on how he's built this roster. He's being exposed. I'm still in the big skills, big skills school of legendary broadcasting. Well, he's getting there because I think he is absolute. He's come further along than what Joy Taylor did. Xander's killing it. He gets it. You know why? He speaks here. He's not trying to be something else when he's phony ass broadcasters. The more you act like someone else in broadcasting, the more no one will believe you. The more you're more like you, the more everyone will believe you. Because people like talking to people, not phonies. And we have a ton of them in broadcasting. They're all phonies. Most of them are phonies. You meet a guy, you're like, that guy was never really like that. Then you meet a guy like me or Xander, you're like, holy shit, you're the same guy. Duh, why wouldn't it be anything different? Okay? Why would I be different? But Xander said something. And, and John, break his heart, I love him to death. John didn't get it. How he's like an emotional spouse with a credit card who can't stop from overspending. Shortly after purchase, they immediately have buyer's remorse. Yes, here. Why didn't Devin White get an opportunity to play? Tell me, come on. And by the way, here's where Xander didn't follow through. The Kobe Dean did not beat out Devin White. He didn't beat him out. With what effort was that that he beat him out? In those shitty practices that John was referencing? The defense has sucked, and so has N'Kobe Dean. How could he have been a guy who shined when he got the lesser reps and Devin White got the majority of the reps? So Devin White's getting 10 reps in practice. Dean's getting four. He beat him out? No, he didn't. Tell me why you think Devin White never played a down in Philadelphia. Do you guys have any idea why? Why didn't he have any? Matthew says his character. His character has nothing to do with it. Nicobe Dean didn't win a job. Draft pick, that is that plays into it, yes. 
Fangio? Nope. 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 You guys are missing it. You're missing it. You're missing it. Bob Sills, the white Dean drama was to validate Howie forcing Dean on the field. Bob, you tell me if you buy what I'm going to say here, Bob. Okay? Dean's personality, that has nothing to do with it. Once again, a terrible take from this guy, Jay. What was the overall package worth that the co that uh, Devin White signed? Wasn't it being reported, like John said this morning on Birds 365, upwards of $8 million? Okay. With $3.5 million guaranteed. Correct? With incentives, it could have got as high as $8 million, right? John reported that today. I heard him say it. Okay. The reason he never got on the field, Devin White had a game day roster bonus of $125,000 for every game he played and was active for. He also got another $85,000 if he started. He would have made an additional $175,000 a week with incentives if he was active on the active roster, game roster. And if he started, he would have got an additional eighty dollars to $90,000. I found this out this morning. You know how I know? I asked my friends at the NFL players what his incentives were. At the end of the year, if he had played 70%, he would have got a $450,000 signing bonus added on to the incentive package that was involved in the deal. It had nothing to do with Kobe Dean beating him out. The Eagles didn't want to pay the incentives because they looked at the player and said, he's not that good. That's why he was never active. I mean, you didn't even know if he could play. But they thought that the money was too much to put him on the team and pay him incentives. This is over money. That's why he was never active. He was never active for a reason because this contract, if all incentives were hit, would be as high as eight and a half million dollars. Remember? That's what they were pimping it as. With three and a half guaranteed. So they never activated him for game day because they didn't want to pay the incentives. They didn't want to pay the near 200 grand a game for being on the Sunday roster and for being a starter. Howie didn't want to do it. He was looking at, he goes like this. He said, no. No. Because once they realized he wasn't, the, by the way, he was all talk. He still is. He's handled himself well. I don't have a problem with the way he's handled himself publicly. He should handle it this way. But once again, the glorified CPA didn't activate the guy because he didn't want to pay the incentives that were in the contract. I mean, listen, in every single NFL contract, here's what I got. Here, let me show you. show you what a bonus looks like. Let me show you what a bonus looks like and how you're paid. The Lions gave me this. There's a $10,000 bonus. See it? This was in 1994. If I'm on the active roster, I get a $10,000 bonus. This is in lieu of my base salary. So every time I was on the active roster, I got a $10,000 bonus. Here's the year down there. It was 92. See? Hey, Troy Lyons. Right there. 
And that's the much money I made of it. It's in the right hand corner. And what it was. Got 10 grand. Okay. Simple. What Howie did was Nicobe Dean has never earned a starting job. Nicobe Dean's cheap. It's cheaper to pay Nicobe Dean than Devin White. That's why Devin White's not playing. He's cheaper. They're just as good as each other. He didn't beat him out. He's cheaper. Howie Roseman, once again, has a third round guy, and he's cheaper. John's trying to tell you that he beat him out. No, he didn't. He beat him out because the salary is cheaper. They looked at both players and went, well, they're the same. They're not really both that good. But this guy's way cheaper because he's a third-round pick and he's on a rookie deal. That's how the Eagles do business on defense. They're dime store shoppers. That's all this is, is dime store shopping. Okay? Seals, don't you think they know that we're watching and we're turning on them? Do you think Jeffrey's going to lose his shit when he's going to lose his yacht? That guy ain't never going to lose his yacht. Remember something, Kim. Always remember this about an NFL owner. Whether he's 16-0 and or 17-0 and or he's 0-17, he's still going to generate $500 million come the turn of the calendar because of the television contracts and the money the league makes. I mean, let's be candid here about the Kobe Dean. What game did he fucking play in the preseason that wowed you? He played none. He was terrible, actually. He was okay in the Baltimore game, kind of. But Baltimore played all their backups. He sucked out loud, actually, in the preseason. And then you're trying to tell me, and I hear John saying, well, he outplayed him in camp. Who fucking played good in camp? Jalen Hurts, who's the biggest turnover guy in the history of the league over the last two years, didn't throw an interception against the shittiest defense in the league. And I'm supposed to sit here and go, N'Kobe Dean won a job playing on the shittiest defense or a bottom five defense in the NFL? Really? Congratulations. Congratulations for being the smallest tree in the forest. What, are you kidding me? This came down to money. Dean's cheaper. Sills, the way how he handled White could hurt future free agent signings. If White doesn't get signed soon, he'll lose a year of, on his pension. Bad look for Howie, his players feel. Hey, but Bob, that's not true. Okay? He was on the active roster, Bob, for four games. That's a year credited. He gets a credited year. Because he wasn't active on the game Sunday roster, that's different. He was on the 53, man. They just had him scratched. His contract is guaranteed. That three and a half is guaranteed, according to the collective bargaining agreement. He gets that three and a half. He don't get the eight. Like I said, they didn't want to pay the incentives on it. Okay. This is facts. All you got to do is go to the NFL Players Association and look at the bylaws. It's there for you. By the way, yeah, let me show you one more thing. Okay? Just to show you I know what I'm talking about here. When it comes to why Devin White didn't get a true chance to make the team, here. And he got a, he got a, uh, you got people in it here. I'm an NFL Players Association member. I fucking know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm an NFL PA lifetime member. All I have to do is call the league. What were his incentives? And the league tells me, or the Players Association tells me. The league won't tell me shit. Players Association will tell me I'm a I'm an NFL Players Association. Hey, coolest thing about this thing? 
right here. Coolest thing about this is if I ever get drunk, I get to call that number down there, that X there. No, give me a free Uber. How you doing? Sales, active roster over game roster. Got it. Right. Active roster. He was on the active roster, Bob. Get this. I mean, that's how the that's how the CBA works. Now, active roster gets you with incentives. That's why how he didn't activate him. Kim. Right. The Kobe Dean didn't beat him out. He was cheaper. I heard John and Xander talking. I'm like, he beat him out? When? When did he beat him out? Howie Roseman parachuted down and said, "We're st if everything is equal, we're starting Dean. One, he's a third-round pick of mine. And White's a free agent. And he's got player incentives that can pay him as high as $8 million. And if everything is equal, I'm not paying $8 million for a guy I have in the building who plays as good as him. It That makes sense. It's an economic decision. That makes sense. But once again, he's a bean counter. And that's why your defense is in the position it's in. This came down to money. It's facts. He would have made an additional $190 million or $190,000 per game being on the fifth, the active Sunday roster. And if he started, he would have got an additional 90. That's why Howie, two, four, six, Howie would have had to pay him 800 grand already on top of the three, five. No way. Right now, they would have voted him four and a half million. That's why he was never active. Those guys are trying to tell you, not to, and listen, it's not a shot. Not many people know this because how many people have had NFL contracts? I've had five pro contracts. Get this all over the world. All over the world. Let me just show you what a contract looks like. This is a this is a professional football contract. Here. Let me show you this. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. If White had the ability to play, would his play outdo what Dean has done? Or yeah, Dean has done for us drafting him. I know White did get benched in Tampa, but can't be worse than what Dean has done. Absolutely, Abe. Let me just show you a little bit of some of the things that are in contracts. You see that right there, right here, right here. See what it says? What that says, see those, those dollar signs? Get $28,000 if you participate in the semifinal game. You get an additional $25,000 if you participate in the conference championship. If you participate in a championship, you get an additional $100,000. These are all incentives that are built into your contracts. Look how many pages this shit is. Look how many pages. By the way, Dan Cilio. You guys are under some impression. The Kobe Dean beat him out. Beat him out. Ain't no social number on there. <laughs> I saw somebody say that. Ain't no social number on there. Fuck that. Okay. The, the guy didn't beat him out. All these contracts have player incentives in them. On time, percentages of plays. All of it. Sometimes your draft status is based on that. Why, why did they keep Kevin Byard on the field? Sure, he had incentives. 
Don't you remember, Steve? They restructured the contract before he, once they signed him, they restructured the contract. It made him easier for them to get out of it. And they dropped probably some of those incentives. Don't you remember? They restructured it. Okay. If we're talking about not playing better players over money, any talk of Lori being a good owner is thrown out the window. Dean is terrible. This comes down to money. Look at your defense. By the way, the exposure of Howie Roseman continues. You guys are under some fucking crazy impression he's a good GM building rosters. Fucking nuts. Here, this is what I posted on my Twitter. X. So, Eagles release linebacker Devin White after recruiting him early in the free agent process and giving him $3.5 million in guarantees. It's just another example of the Birds GM Howie Roseman not having a clue on how to evaluate the linebacker position. He drafted N'Kobe Dean, who's a bust, and allowed T.J. Edwards and Kaiser White, who is balling actually in Arizona, just to walk out the door. I mean, who was the last linebacker that they signed or drafted that was worth a shit? Roseman has no idea what he's doing on defense, and he's a glorified CPA acting like an NFL GM. That has not changed. That's a fact. Show me one area of the football team on defense where he's fucking been competent. One area where he's been competent. One area. Why? Hey, how about this? M. Reyes says, why are we reading all the BS? Okay, then you tell me where he's been fucking competent on defense. M. Reyes, I'll wait. Where's he been competent? DT? Keith, are you sure about that? Keith, are you sure? When you're getting the shit run down your throat? I said on defense, show me one place on defense where he's been competent. Show me one place. By the way, this ain't bullshit in the middle. Show me one place where he's been competent. Where? Where? Or edge rusher. Where has he been competent on defense? Why are you lying for him? Why are you lying for... Look at this. Quinion Mitchell. Hopefully, hopefully. Seals is Howie finally on the hot seat with Lori. No fucking way. No way. M. Reyes, I'm still waiting. Where on defense has he been competent? Brandy Graham was not signed by Howie Roseman. Show me. How he ditched an aging talent. We brought in depth for talent. You don't have any fucking talent? Where? You don't have a... Get this. What M. Reyes isn't telling you. Nobody on the team is older than six years who's been drafted. They don't have anybody outside of Brandon Graham since 2017. That was drafted by Roseman. Slay's the free agent. Howie Roseman's been a GM for 15 years, and he don't have anybody from the 2017 draft on defense. Interesting. That's some, that's some record. What? That means they only get one contract. Don't you understand that? Most people that get drafted to Philadelphia don't make it to their second contract on defense. Don't you get it? They move on from them. Dude, with the fifth-year option, the sixth year, they move on.
Look at that. Hardgrave is a stealer. Correct. He's a free agent. Howie Roseman. Pay, get this. Howie, when he makes a mistake, he pays for it in free agency or a trade. A.J. Brown. Jalen Rager is the J. Jalen Rager. Okay. A.J. Brown is the Jalen Rager cover for his mistake. Hassan Reddick was the cover for all the Derek Barnett's of the world. Darius Slay was the cover for all the shitty cornerbacks they missed on. He went to other organizations to sit there and fucking go and find other players that were developed in other places to cover his mistakes in the college draft. No other way to look at it. So why sign White? Is it because Dean injury prone? They signed Devin White because they thought he was going to replace Dean. And when they realized he couldn't replace Dean and he was the same guy, how he went, I'm not paying $8 million in incentives for a guy that we have in the building that I drafted in the third round that will give me the same performance. So we went cheaper. This is not that hard to figure out why you're in the shape defensively. You know, people are going, I heard, I heard the guys talking this morning going, well, the defense is going to get better. You know, you know what I said? Fucking defense isn't getting better. You don't have good enough players. And the players you have aren't developed enough yet. And now you're rushing Cooper DeJean. Okay? Now you're rushing later in the – okay? I'm with you, Sales, and this is not to make any excuses for Howie, but how much of the defense ineptitude is failure to develop players? Doesn't he hire the coaches? How does Howie justify the losses of Devin either way? I, I, I don't by by starting Dean. Okay, so Philly 500 can't make it today. Because he had an issue at work. So, dude, all good. No worries. Now, Mark Holmes thinks we 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 banned him anyway. Make sure you take a shit on him big time when he comes in here. Because he thinks he's been banned. He po and We posted the video too, Xander and I. I'm with you, Sills. This is not to make an excuse for Howie. How much of the defensive ineptitude is failure to develop players? Hey, relative. We'll try keeping a coaching staff intact. Take a look at this. Watch this here. I'm going to take that ESP's bullshit out. Becton, Barkley, Hennessy, Campbell, Ross. Here, Huff, White, Zach Bond, I guess. Oren Burks, no. Gardner Johnson, no. Who did he sign this year? That was good. Defensively. Who did he sign? You want to know what? You know what? I know why I've never. You guys kill me. And tell me what a great GM he is. Prove it to me. Prove it to me. You destroyed Wentz. You're destroying Hurts. You have all this money on offense. You got second year in a row. Hey, can you name me an organization that has won? Xander, help me out here. 11-6, 14-3. Can you name me another organization that has won 25 of 34 ball games that has changed their coordinators out two years in a row? Can you? Can you name me another football team that's won 25 of 34 fall football games in the regular season? That has changed their coordinators out.
I've never heard anything like it. You win 25 to 34 games. And you got a new set of coordinators over the last two years. Buffalo, that's not true. Sean McDermott has been the defensive coordinator in Buffalo since he's been the head coach. And Joe Brady was midway through the season. They didn't change him out this year. Those are the same guys. Not true. Lie. Fake news. Name me another one. Both coordinators. Both coordinators. Again, this is the GM controlling the roster. He builds that team so fucked up. He does. White, Bird, Morrow, Taylor, Cunningham, Dean, Smith, Bradbury, Slay, Davis, loss of Edwards, Kaiser too, moves all suck. We haven't developed anyone. Roseman should have been fired. No, no, that's not that. No, he will not be fired because of the Devin White move. The owner loves it. You know how he can justify paying Devin White the three and a half to his owner? You know how he can justify it? We're paying, we're paying to Kobe less. We make it up in the back end. I got you, brother. Thank you, brother. Not a problem, dude. You're our boy. You know that, man. We appreciate you more than you know. All good. Don't worry. We'll kill what's his name when he comes in here. All good, Philly. And I appreciate you doing that, dude. Forget signing. Who have we drafted? We haven't drafted a pro bowler since Cox. I was Andy, not Howie. We don't draft impact players. We poach them from other teams, other championship teams. Championships are built. And by the way, you're right, Anthony. They're not sustainable that way. Thanks for the super chats. All of them go to the top, and we appreciate it. Hey, Sills, it's easy to see Lori is only thinking about his bottom line, just flashing a potential potent offense he delivers, he believes, will only mask the defense. Dude, that's why you're – get this. Dude, is your offense with high, high potent and high – Talented teams, high talented talent. Absolutely. No question. AJ Brown, Devontae, Barkley, the old line. But what's the one thing that you don't have? There's two things. You don't have the right coach and the right quarterback. Jalen Hurts is masked by the talent you have in your offense. He's not that good. He is not going to be a sustainable championship quarterback. He's Colin Kaepernick. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not going to put up 14 wins. That guy's not sustainably a good player. That's why he was replaced at Alabama. Personally, he's just not a pro-style quarterback. You want to go back to running him the same way you ran him? Like when he was in 22? That's a different conversation. But they don't want that conversation anymore. He, he's electric when he's that guy. By the way, I'm not quantifying that anymore. That story's dead. Seals, the success over the last two years, even thought the coordinators have changed. Even though the coordinator says, allows Howie to validate his plan. The team wins with undisciplined talent, which is why they're inconsistent. Bob, one year you get here. Bob, you answer this for me then. Hey, by the way, I am sick and tired of fucking pussyfooting around with this conversation about Howie Roseman. He's a fucking horrible talent evaluator. End of story. End of story. It's fucking terrible. And I'm going to prove it to you. What's the difference between the 22 free agents that you brought in and the 2024 free agents that you brought in that have been colossal fuck-ups? What's the one thing that's been different? Just like Bob said, one year you're going to get character guys like Sue, Linville Joseph, Combine that with Hardgrave, 
And look at the veteran leadership at defensive tackle alone you had. Javon Hardgrave, Fletcher Cox, Linville Joseph, 10-year-plus guy, Sue, a Hall of Fame football player. All these guys may have been mercenaries, but they knew how to prepare for ball games. And they were great players. You Whatever you thought about Hassan Reddick, he delivered 30 sacks. How he didn't want to pay him. Why? I don't know. Because you know why? He can't fucking evaluate edge rushers. He wouldn't know if an edge rusher hit him in the mouth. You can't explain Kaiser White. And TJ Edwards playing so well. And you have garbage that you replace them with. The only thing you come up with is that they're cheaper. Zach Bond's cheap, and so is Dean. You didn't want to pay White the five million or the seven million he got in Arizona. You surely didn't want to pay Edwards the seven million. Do you know that Kaiser signed for a seven million dollar deal? Jonathan Gannon knew he was good. He knew he was good. So what is the current track of Hurricane Howie? I still think it's sitting at Category 3. That thing will be Category 5 if they fucking lose Sunday. Okay? De Nicobe Dean beat out Devin White? How? In practice? Even Vic Fangio says it's not real football. He beat him out doing what? Running over bags, John? Got to give me a, I mean, really. Even the coordinator doesn't consider those organized team practices and those practices real football. They told him to play Dean. Just like they're telling him to play, huh? Bryce Huff should be benched. He's he's a liability. Every time he's on the field, he's a liability. Hey, by the way, if I'm in third and eight, and I see Bryce Huff on the field, I'm not throwing the ball. I'm running at him. He can't set the edge. I'll get 11 yards just by running at him. Dude, who would have thought the way you're going to negate Bryce Huff in third and long is run at him? Told you that in the preseason. He won't be able to stop the run. I'm not throwing the ball with him. Why would I do that? The one thing he might do well, and he hasn't yet. Kobe Dean beat out Devin White. Xander went like this. He just didn't finish the topic. Xander goes like this. He never even got on the field to see if he could beat him out. And John turned around and goes, he beat him out in practice. Doing what? Hitting a fucking donkey dick? And running bags? And running tires? What did he put? They don't practice tackling. How in the world did Nicobe Dean beat him out? What drill and skill set was it that he beat him out? Xander goes, Devin White played more. No comment. Guys. How he can't draft unless it's a shoe-in pick, Devontae, Carter, and Mitchell. No-brainers. Outside of that, he's been incompetent. No, no. Big Sills is not. Xander had a great topic. You know how hard it is to make topics in sports talk? Impossible. And he does it every day now. Absolutely not. It was a great topic. Because he, he was trying to answer it without disrespecting John. 
How did the guy just not get on the field? That that I'm I'm, I'm remembering what Xander said just because how did, he didn't even get a shot to see if he could outplay him though. Well, John turned around when he well he did it in practice. W doing what? He had the less reps. I'm doing what? What possibly could he have done? I mean, no. I mean, it was a great topic. Who started this rumor that he's a great GM? Dude, you know why he's a great GM? He knows what to do with money. Remember, how he comes from the capologist side of the room, not from the personnel side, like Brett Veach or John Lynch. Those guys come from personnel side. He can, He's a bookworm. He's a glorified CPA acting as an NFL general manager. It's what he is. Nothing more. He's excellent. Maybe the best in the league at watching the owner's money. That's why he'll always have a job in the NFL. You know why? That's what the owners want. You know where he'd be a great GM? Cincinnati. He'd be a great general manager. But the problem there is this. Mike Brown's not going to give the bag of money up front like Jeffrey Lurie does. How he has convinced the owner, hey, you want to build a great roster? Give the money up front. Back end those contracts with lesser money so you can escape those deals. It's brilliant. But the owner's got to go along with it. That's why they sign guys ahead of time. They sign guys ahead of time so they can back end those contracts with lower money and lower hits to the cap. It's brilliant. But in the end, what you do is you eventually, that money is like this next two years, rents due. You owe, you owe these, you owe money. You owe over $300 million, which will have to be restructured. And that's why your defense, hey, by the way, the money you spend on offense has affect, you know, people, I think Xander too. Some of you guys, I kept trying to bring this up. Well, the reason you haven't spent any money on defense is because of the money you spent on offense. The money you gave A.J. Brown has affected your defense. The miss on Rager has affected your defense. Instead of having a rookie on a contract for five years, you've paid $100 million to A.J. Brown. You don't think that money could have been spread around like you see in Kansas City and other places like Green Bay? That's right. I just saw somebody in here. And you're paying $24 million in two aging cornerbacks, one who doesn't play, and the other one who's passed his time in slay. Those are economic disasters. The white deal's not economically disastrous. The cornerbacks are. Slay and Bradbury are not $25 million cornerback tandems. That's the worst tandem in money in the league. Devin White made three and a half million to cheerlead here in Philly. Clowning Hurts getting sacked by the Bucks. What a joke! The Bucks knew it. The Bucks knew it. Get this. This guy misses the point. He completely misses the point. A.J. Brown is one of the issues in why the defense doesn't have stars on it. And you don't have people on second con Hey, what guy? Help me out here. What guy that Howie has drafted on defense is on a second contract on defense? Let's see. Lana Dickerson on offense is on a second deal. Malata's on a second deal. Um, Hertz is on a second deal. Um, name me one defensive player that he drafted that is on a second contract. Josh Sweat. Who else? 
He didn't draft Brandy Graham. So in the last 15 years, he has one guy who's made it to a second contract. Is that right? Where the fuck are you telling me he's a good talent evaluator? Prove it. Blankenship wasn't drafted. Blankenship was a UDFA. Dude, that guy does a better job at finding undrafted free agents than he does drafting players on defense. Crowley, he didn't draft Reed Blankenship. Seals contracts and trades hide Howie's inability to draft and develop. Bob, how come the media in Philly doesn't see that? Ask anybody. They'll swear to you he's a phenomenal drafter. I don't see it. I look at Jalen Hurts now and go, like I did before, that's not an elite quarterback in the league. I'm not building my team around him. No fucking way. What guy on offense would you build your team around? AJ, Lane, Mulata. Who else? Funny, AJ, he didn't draft him. Traded for him. I mean, Blankenship was not drafted. Defense. I mean, dude, and by the way, read Blankenship, he's okay. I wouldn't call him a – I'd replace him in a second if I had a better safety. He's okay. He, he's a good player. Would, would, would he be my front-line top three or strong safety? Absolutely not. Dude, that guy, he stinks at drafting. Seals, do you think the Bucks look at Howie as a moron? No. I think when Howie Roseman calls other general managers and is looking to trade, I think they're suspicious because he usually does a fair job at that. But get this. The guy in Washington probably laughing his ass off at that guy, Johan Dotson, right now. He's got to be laughing his ass off. That guy just stole a third-round pick for a guy who's Jalen Rager the second. I mean, he's Jalen Rager 2.0. How many people actually think Dotson is ever going to be an impact player for a third-rounder? Do you know right now what the Raiders are looking for? The Raiders are just looking for a second-rounder for Devontae Adams. No team is willing to give up because of his age, a second rounder for Devontae fucking Adams. And the Eagles gave up a third round pick for Johan Dotson. You could have had Devontae Adams, maybe. The Raiders only wanted two. They only wanted two. You gave a three for Dotson. Do you see how preposterous that is? I, no, this guy misses this too, Slagger. Who said that? Who said the Eagles would have had to pay all of that contract for Adams? You give hey, you give the Raiders a two. For Devontae Adams and the Raiders pick up the majority of the contract and you let him play it out, he's 32 next year. I don't know. Helps you win a Super Bowl, you let him walk out the door. 
I would have done that. A Super Bowl for two? Sure. Any day. Not a three for a guy who will never help you. This guy's dumb. This is dumb. In the past eight years, who has Roseman drafted after the first round that was not picked by Stoutland or O-line? Sam, that was decent. Sweat? I guess hurts. Where is he good? Milton Williams? All right. Dude, if you think that guy's a good drafter, you're full of shit. You have no idea what you're talking about when it comes to football. If you think that guy can draft and build a team through the draft, he can't. He could never work in Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh, that's all they do is talent evaluation through the draft and build their team through the draft. Same in Green Bay and the same in Kansas City. Really, in many ways, now the same in San Francisco. But look, look at who John Lynch has drafted. George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. They traded on offense for McCaffrey and for Trent Williams. They got him on a steal from Washington. And they drafted Brock Purdy. Have to spend that much on offense to compensate for the next trash overpaid quarterback. My commanders, if I was laughing at Philly, how he evaluates like Dan Snyder. By the way, that that's an owner thing too, remember. Jeffrey Lurie thinks he knows what he's fucking doing, too. And he's a non-football guy. He has no idea what he's doing. His analytics, between the analytics, you know, they use the analytics also to, to draft players. That's why it's, it's all over the place. Okay? Thank you, Manster. Appreciate it. All Super Chats go to the top. That's a nice comment. Dude, think of this. Okay, they use analytics in free agency and in the draft. Nobody drafts Nolan Smith. You know, Brand, you, know, you know, Barrett Brooks was trying to tell you he's a fifth pick in the draft, and I'm like, that guy's a fifth rounder. Nolan Smith is not a good pick. He's like, this guy will be a star. I'm like, I didn't see him as a star when he was at Georgia. And and then I remember people going like that. And by the way. I don't believe the Jordan Davis pick is horrible. But Jordan Davis, on my draft board, the year he came out, I had him at 22. When you guys had three ones that year, I had him down at 22, 25, somewhere down there. Is he better than Mozzie Smith? Absolutely. Is he the 13th pick? Fucking never. Never. Dude, you know where they get in trouble? Overcooking the roster. They can't leave well enough alone. You couldn't leave Hurts alone. You couldn't leave the offensive scheme alone. You couldn't leave what they were doing on defense alone by keeping White and keeping Edwards. It would make the two defensive tackles better today if you had those two guys on. The Can you imagine if you had Edwards and White Playing behind Davis and Carter, would they be better? Of course they would be better. Would you be better in pass coverage? Of course you would be better in pass coverage. They can't leave well enough alone. Brown Smith Lane all practicing today. That's good news. I'm still taking the eight and a half in Cleveland. 
I want to see them get in a game because you have, dude, whatever you say about your offense, that offense is sputtered with them guys. My problem is your defense. That has not changed my evaluation of your team. You're not that good. You have no edge rusher on your team right now. And that includes Brandon Graham. Sills, is it easier to be an edge rusher because not being double teamed most of the time like DTs? Yeah, but you have to have a propensity of knowing what you're doing out there. Like if they're going to set, you have to set the edge. That means this, you can't let teams get wide on your outside shoulder. And the Eagles have no players outside of Brandon Graham that can do that. And Josh, and Josh. But once again, high volume of, hey, Josh Sweat's going to play 950 plus plays this year. If he doesn't get hurt, he's going to play north of 950. Because the rest of your guys stink. Sills, I already had instinct. He should be talking to Mike from Kansas City. I like this guy here, Borgonzi, uh, as a GM draft personnel guy, how he does calculations only. Has worked under Veach. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great organization. And, and, and absolutely. But like I, I'm trying to show you here, Howie Roseman is the worst talent evaluator that I've ever seen that's being blown up as some talent evaluator. Where? Where has he evaluated correctly? The quarterback? No. Quarterback's average. Devontae? He was ready-made out of Bama. Good. He, wh where? Stoutland has been the guy at the offensive line. He's the guy hand-picking. Jason Kelsey has said it. Jeff Stoutland, myself. We're the guys that picked Cam Jurgens. He would never have taken Cam Jurgens. He had no idea what he's looking at. And by the way, how, how do you justify having Zach Bond on the team and Nicobe Dean on the team and you allow Kaiser White and TJ Edwards, who one was a free agent that was expelled from the Chargers, and the other guy you found? and developed it to being one of the top flight linebackers. You developed him for the Bears. Think about what you're saying here. The Philadelphia Eagles developed T.J. Edwards for the Bears. For the Bears. For the Bears. By the way, the stuff that has gone on for like, you know, telling me how great this guy is, it's enough. He stinks as a GM and personnel. Get this. You guys are saying that Kaiser White stinks. He had 120 tackles his final year in, in Philly. You haven't had a linebacker better than him. You're out of your fucking minds. You're, you look at your team and think you're better than you are. Get this. Keith says you can't pay everyone. Keith, you pay no one. On defense, you pay no one. You you didn't upgrade your defense with Huff because all you did was move Reddick's number over to him. That wasn't. And by the way, I see someone bring up Zach Bond. Zach Bond, he's fucking common. He's a common player. Let's see how this is for seventeen weeks. You really think that guy's going to play great football for 17 weeks? Never. Never.
we are really going to cry about draft picks from the past. Draft picks from the past? I'm talking about the last four years. Dude, I'm talking about the last five years. Building a roster the last five years. How about this, Mike? Name me one fucking guy you've drafted in the last five years that you think is an all-pro or he's ever drafted as an all-pro. Show me one. Uh, there is none. You don't have one. All your money and talent is on offense. That's by design. That's by design. By design. And once again, the reason your offense goes up and down now, because your quarterback and your head coach are not, not in sync. You don't have the right guys. You have not figured out that yet. You have a problem at quarterback and head coach. You have to have that dynamic fixed for you to be a championship football team on a consistent basis year in and year out. And until you have that dynamic fixed, you'll have these pendulum swings where you get a shitty roster, or no, you get a shitty schedule. You'll go down to four wins. That's why you're trending down. You're trending down because your roster is trending down. By the way, you're getting older at right guard, right tackle. You haven't figured out right guard. Your center's brand new. And once again, you have a brand new coordinator. Justin Jefferson, how he blew that. How about this? Jersey dude, I brought this up before, and I'll bring it up one more one more time to you. The significance is not just the fact that he's a generational player. The, but the significance fact is you had him for five years on a rookie deal. And inside that process, you paid A.J. Brown $100 million to cover for the Rager draft pick that was a failure, and you lose that equity in the money which you could have spread out on your defense. That's the double hit. You lose the one and the equity of the money because you covered it with $100 million that you had to pay AJ. Some would go, is AJ worth it? Well, not at the expense of the... AJ, AJ Brown is not worth the expense of a defense, of an entire defensive unit. No matter how well you think he is and how good you think he is. It didn't matter last year. He had a record year. And he still went one to seven. A.J. Brown had a great year. 100 catches, 1,500 yards. Super year. Didn't matter. What's the point? When your defense sucks. You really think A.J. Brown is worth the money at the expense of your defense. Okay. Well, it's not paying out that playing playing out that way. And he's just one of the guys on offense that you're paying. Then you turn around and you address him on he has two years remaining on the deal and you give him more money. Why not fucking address the Xavier McKinney or Patrick Queen or somebody or Brian Burns? No interest in that. No interest. How he paid all the players base on 22. This team sucks. This team is sucks constructive wise. By the way, Farzetta will join us at the bottom of the hour. Good point on defensive effect of AJ. Completely. Think about this. Like I said, you know why Devontae Adams is a gold mine? He take, gives you a hometown discount, which is not going to kill you. He's going to make like $9 million bucks this year. Next year, 14-something. He, he allowed the fifth-year option to be involved in the deal. Why he did that, the guy in Detroit makes more. And is he better? I don't know. I don't think so. That St. Brown guy? I think he's a good ball player. Is he better than Devontae? I don't know. I think they're kind of compatible. But that guy's making $32 million. He gave you a deal. And he's going to give you a deal for the next three years until that back end hits. It's one of the very few contracts that Howie did that was back ended loaded with bigger money. 
Because why? Oh, we drafted him. That's why when, you know, I, I, I hear people constantly telling me that this guy knows what he's doing in the draft. He does not. Get this. Here's another issue. Vic's scheme isn't aggressive enough. Gannon ran the 43, Ben, don't break. It's more aggressive at times. Forrest, why'd you hire him then? Knowing full well you don't have the personnel to fit the scheme. It's how he plugging, plugging and playing again. Not understanding. He doesn't have the people to play Vic. Vic is the wrong coordinator for that talent. You know where Vic would work? San Francisco. Because he has rushers and he has Fred Warner. And Hufanga. With a scheme like this, with no pressure, young safeties, and a young corner CB2, and a young defensive tackle group, and horrible linebackers, two deep safety with your corners off the ball 10 yards, how in the world do you think that's going to work? Schematically, you're lining up bad players in bad positions. Do you understand where you are now as a group? Your offense versus the Browns on Sunday has to come out of this bye and carry this team. You're going to be in every fucking game this year, rest of the way out. You're not blowing anybody out. You don't have the talent to blow people out. The Eagles could score 30 points and put up 350 yards of total offense and lose. You're kind of built like the Bengals. You're kind of built like them. You're built a little like the Bengals. Pretty good offense. The Bengals messed up. You know how? Joe Mixon was more of a focal point in that offense than what Zach Taylor thought and what Mike Brown and Duke Tobin thought. He was more of an instrumental part of that in moving the chains. They have no running game. They're 31st. They're 31st. You know what's funny? All the shit the players in Miami were saying about Vic, you're seeing it. Hey, get this. So Dick Train goes, you're two and two. In your last 13 ball games, you're three and ten. Same issues. You're three and ten. Sills and Redskins are the new 49ers East. Keep quarterback, build your team, throw us $120 million in cap space in 25. Hollywood Hogan, it's a great point. Let me let me let me put it to you this way here, Hollywood, on how the Seattle Seahawks and the Patriots were built. Okay. And how basically Kansas City's being built. Follow me here, Hollywood. How many years of equity do you think New England got with Brady being a sixth-round pick where they didn't have to pay the quarterback to build the defense, the O-line, and they never spent money on wide receivers ever? They didn't spend any money on wide receivers the entire time Tom Brady was in New England. Remember how they got Randy Moss? They sent a sixth-rounder a kid from Syracuse to the Raiders because everyone thought Moss was out of gas in Oakland. 
they didn't spend any money and they gave him a league minimum deal. And when he wanted more money, what did they do? They traded him. They never spent a dime on anybody in New England. They had five years of building that roster and dynasty up. And what became a bigger factor? Brady never made the most money in the league. He wasn't even in the top five in salary. Brady didn't make big money until he got to Tampa. He never made big money. Why do you think during the Pete Carroll era that they were able to build that defense and they were able to build, you know why? John Schneider finding Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Michael Bennett on free agency, drafting in lateral rounds, and Russell Wilson was a third rounder. Tavares Jackson, who was a backup quarterback in Minnesota, made more money in Russell Wilson's first three years than Russell Wilson, who had taken to his team to a Super Bowl twice, two times in a row, winning one of them. Do you know that? That's how Seattle was built. Look at how Seattle's being rebuilt now. They got Geno on a, on a comp deal of $20 million a year. They're not paying $50 million for a quarterback. And they're getting the same results, if not better results, than Hurts. Got to remember something about when you build an NFL team versus building a college team. The economics are number one front and center. This is why when you hear the comment that Devin White got beat out, Devin White never got beat out. Devin White's contract was the issue and why he never played. He never got on the field to prove he could play. Wait a minute. So he lost his job in an organized team practice? What fucking shot is that? What, because he couldn't run over bags? Yeah, get this. Sills, the Seabags won one Super Bowl with all that talent. They got two NFC titles and a Super Bowl out of that. Yeah. Not everybody's as fortunate as New England. Okay. They still won. That dynasty, when they had Marshawn Lynch in the building and all those guys, you weren't better than them. And it was more sustainable. You didn't have these giant flips and ups and downs like you do on defense. The Legion of Boom was intact for five, six years. Yours has never been. Ever. I mean, dude, I'm going to show you one more time. See this contract? This is a professional football contract. You see this? And I showed you in the first hour. See those player incentives? Down there you have. See those playing incentives? All written in the contracts. Okay? Kobe Dean didn't beat out Devin White. What happened was, once again, he had $100,000 for being on the active roster on game days. And if he started, he had another 90. How he didn't want to pay the 200 grand every week for Devin White. Why? Nicobe Dean's cheaper. He's on a rookie deal. And they came to the conclusion that Devin White wasn't good enough anyway. It's why the economics on that side of the ball. And by the way, one more time, before I bring Farzetta in here, stop with this notion how he's a good draft pick guy. He's not. He's horrible. Name me one guy. Do you One more time, before I bring Farzetta on, there's not one guy on that team that he drafted that's from the 17 draft and back. 2018 and up. So you're telling me nobody gets to a second contract on defense?
that this ESP guy, who's a mouthpiece for the uh, organization, put down, believe it, I couldn't believe that he actually called them out with all these horrific draft picks or um, free agent signings that Roseman's had. They're all horrible, every one of them, except for Becton and Barkley. The rest of them suck. Okay, I mean, let's bring in Mark Farzell.